In the analyze phase, we learn how the process works and what leads up to any problems or effects. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel. We will talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And in this fourth video on the, the MAIC way of working, way of improving, we talk about the analyze phase. And analyzing, that is really understanding how the process works, sort of getting an epiphany, getting an insight on what happens that causes our problem or that makes a lot of variation in the process or whatever type of performance we would like to improve. Now, in the previous analyze phase, we have been really digging into what the process is doing, right? What products are coming out? What are the defect modes if we're looking at defect? What is the distribution, are there any trends, all kinds of descriptions of how the process sort of behaves and what products are coming out. But in the analyze phase, we are going to look at what makes this process tick. So how do we get there? And we will see in the analyze phase quite a number of the tools that we will also use in root cause problem solving. And so if you want more detailed instructions on how to do that, how to do that with a group. I have a nice course on that, on problem solving. Now that course uses it to get to a root cause, but the same tools will also allow you to get to the causes when we are analyzing the process. And here is also the big difference, right, between that type of root cause problem solving and the DMAIC approach, where we don't per se, in fact, usually not, expect that there's one single root cause. Here we expect that we have to improve or at least deal with a number of factors, a number of variables, and try to make our process stable in an optimum condition. Now, what you then generally do is you use this cause and effect tree, a fishbone, right? So this is exactly the same tool as for a root cause problem solving. The only thing here is how you use it or actually what you put in is different. So when you're looking for a root cause, and this is something we discuss quite a lot, you have a problem here and you're trying to find causes of specifically that problem. And it is very efficient to focus in on changes that you had, right? So is suddenly the temperature a lot higher than usual? Now here, when we are in a process optimization type of the MAIC, you do this project when it's not a problem that suddenly occurs, right? This is no single event. We have had this high variation or this uh, pro uh, problem or this poor performance or whatever. We've had it coming back for a long time. So we're not really looking for that specific change. We're just looking for the factors. What causes there to be some effect? What are the factors that influence the outcome of the process the most? And what you then do is, with those factors, if you really want to go into process optimization, you put that into a designed experiment. But DOE, or design of experiment, that is a way to have a number of factors, three, four, usually we don't go much higher, but you can go, you know, really up into the higher. The thing is just that it, it multiplies, right? If you are going to check the optimum condition between three factors, like in this picture, we already have, okay, so two and then times two and then times another two is eight different things we need to check. When you go to four and only checking two options per each of those factors, we bump it up to 16. And that's if you only check two. So we're now factoring the two. But what if you say, I also want to check the middle point just to make sure, because that is one of the things you will do as soon as your DOE results come back. You want to test them by plotting in a middle point. So actually, it's powers of three. So this here is already 27 tests that we need to do. And then maybe we want to repeat it because, you know, one test isn't really a test. Whew, don't do that with eight or 10 or 12 different factors unless you are really sure you need to. That is why you 
pre-select what are those causes, factors that have the most effect on your process, or at least on that effect in your process, that outcome that you want to change, and you put them into that design experiment. Now, the other way this can go is much closer, let's say, to traditional problem solving, where you are looking indeed more for defects, right? And the causes just trigger you to go and analyze them further. Go in with a five why of why it happens, because as soon as you put them up here, you know oh, that that is going to be a problem. Right? So we need to investigate how this can come to be. And you can make this whole failure tree or a five why. And again here, the thing is a bit, a failure tree and a five why, they're very similar. This, the, the five why is sort of one line. The failure tree flows out. And the reason why in a demaic type of improvement project, you generally have those sort of more complicated tools, it's because the problems you're attacking are often also not as clear. They do not have a single factor pushing them over the edge this time. Now, we've had factors doing that probably for years already or for quite a long time. We want to find optima, we want to find combinations of causes that together really make our problem or, or, or our event happen. So that is really what is in the analyze phase. To learn that these tools and the five Y tools go and check out a problem solving course like mine. But if you want to really understand the process, this phase is the one where you know, sort of most of the actual mathematics and physics come in. The previous ones were really you know, sort of light statistics. Here, some problems can still be solved with more brainstorming and light statistics. Other problems, they do require a bit more, well, maybe not per se difficult maths, where we're usually not going into all kinds of high-grade maths, but it is a, an understanding of chemistry and physics and the, the real things happening in your process. That is what we need to achieve in the analyze phase. How does our project, uh, our process work? What can we learn about stabilizing it? Where do we need to apply our improvement leverage to get a process that will really work, that will really be stable and be giving us the products that we need with all of the parameters and the speed and the efficiency that we want as well. For that, this is basically the most valuable part of the make of Six Sigma for a learning organization. Now I know for your manager, the improved part that will come next is the most valuable because that'll bring in the cash, but a organization going for world-class management, world-class operations, they need to master their own processes. So this is really important work if you want your organization to survive in the longer term, to be able to beat the competition in your own market because you really know what you're doing. So great phase of the make. And I also hope that this triggers you to you know, split this out, to understand what to do and that you like that explanation. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. For now, I wish you the best of luck doing this often pretty hard phase of analyzing your problems and processes. And as always, don't forget to enjoy the continuous improvement process.